Hey, what's going on, everyone? I am back after a very long hiatus. Um, first off, guys, I know that I haven't uploaded in a while on this channel, and I've already explained this in a previous video that I did probably uh, months ago or several weeks by this point. So I do apologize for that. Um, obviously, as you guys know, as I've explained, I've been very busy with stuff that's been going on with me. School, work, and, you know, all the various reasons that I've explained already. So I'm just saying I'll be back to doing videos every now and then, hopefully, once in a while, at least here for the channel. So to avoid an impromptu explanation, um, it's good to see you guys again. And uh, let's start the video already on my retrospective of Banjo-Kazooie. Now this isn't a full review of the game because obviously I've only played the first few levels of it and I kind of wanted to give a first impressions type video for what you guys might be able to expect that either haven't played the game or kind of start a conversation with those of you who are experts at the game at this point. Because when Banjo-Kazooie first released on the N64, I did not grow up with the console. And the N64 was not a console that I was familiar with and I wasn't familiar with any of the legendary classics on there like Banjo-Kazooie, GoldenEye 007, you know, various titles like that. So when I grew up with the PS1, I never even knew about it. However, due to Rare re-releasing the game, and eventually I ported it to the Xbox One store, where you could play a bunch of 360 games, I ended up getting the Game Pass for free, and I downloaded Banjo-Kazooie, and I played it for a while, and I have to say, I can understand why this game is a classic. I also have to say, from the talks of it, there's nothing else I could really add for a full review anyway. This game has gotten all the praise in the universe from various people on YouTube, from media outlets, from pretty much everybody under the sun that could say this is one of the, probably the best games ever made, especially for the N64 itself. So instead of me giving you guys a full review, because again, I couldn't anyway, because again, I've only played a few levels, I instead want to tell you guys a bit about what I thought about certain parts of the game and overall what you could possibly expect going in if you've never played it. One thing I really loved about Banjo-Kazooie, besides the uniqueness of all the platforming mechanics and just how different it stands out, one thing I really want to uh, address right now is the music. Oh my goodness, I love the music in this game. Mumbo Mountain was the very first memorable track that came to me, especially in a platformer. Crash Bandicoot's one of my favorite video game franchises of all time, but Crash 1 had nothing on Banjo-Kazooie's music. It had so much detail in it, the way that it played the theme song in its own tone depending on the area, the way that it kept the constant upbeat as you're climbing up the mountains or you're going through Treasure Trove Cove, you know, you're walking along sandy beaches and that really nice tropical melody played. The music of this game was composed brilliantly and I love it. And one little detail that I noticed with this game that is also amazing is whenever the water segments, which I will cover a little later, the music changes. It sounds like it changes deeper like when you're in the water so that way it fits the tone of what you're doing. So the music has a dramatic shift. It still plays the same theme, but it's either lighter or lower depending on what you're doing. So if you're in the water, it sounds like it's like under the water, like if that makes any sense, like it's lower in melody. So the level of detail and the amazingness and the composition of the music, very good standout part. And if you haven't played the game and you want to hear the music from it, uh, from hearing this, look up a track on YouTube. Look up a uh, playlist or anything else that you can find. The music, top notch. Now, the main meat and potatoes of this game, of course, isn't really the music. Uh, the graphics, by the way, are amazing. Uh, the detail in Banjo and Kazooie's designs, the character designs, the witty dialogue in this game is absolutely fantastic, especially between Bottles and Kazooie. Just the constant name-calling and the various power-ups and whatnot you can execute are animated beautifully in this game, as well as the various environments, the waves in Treasure Trove Cove, the, um, the monkey, surprisingly enough, comes to mind for me when I think of the visuals with the way that he's constantly animated throwing uh, mangoes or whatever that fruit is at you. Even other smaller details like Mumbo himself inside his hut. The, all that stuff combined with me and the open-worldness of Banjo-Kazooie where each level is open-ended and you have tons of collectibles to find. You have various ways to progress to the level and find all of the jiggies, which are golden puzzle pieces that you need to collect in order to get to Gruntilda. I'll get to the plot here in a second. But I wanted to kind of get the visual part out of the way as well because, again, there is nothing else I could add. Just my own perspective, of course. But the visuals in this game as well, besides the music, the presentation overall is amazing for this game. Now the story from what I gather from Banjo Kazooie is like one of those lighthearted, goofy, not to be taken seriously, cart Saturday afternoon cartoon type things, where a witch named Gruntilda kidnaps Banjo, who is the bear in the story's sister, and she wants to take her beauty and make herself look beautiful, which is basically the entire plot. And then Banjo and his trusty best friend Kazooie, who is a red bird, um, with the assistance of bottles, of course, teaching them new power-ups to progress through each of these levels. 
provide uh, go off and try to rescue her from Gruntelda. So there's basic that is a very short premise of the plot. There's so, like subplots throughout the different worlds, different unique way wacky zany characters that you can meet in these different worlds that you have to go through. And of course, like I mentioned before, the main collectible in this game are the jiggies, where you have they're gold jigsaw pieces that you have to use to piece together paintings in order to traverse these different worlds you come across in uh, Gruntilda's castle. And you have to complete each of these worlds in order to make it to the top of the castle. Of course, if you want the full ending, you have to pretty much collect everything in this game. There's plenty of other collectibles hidden and scattered throughout the levels. And, uh, yeah, that's basically what this is, a platformer collectathon. And I have to say, too, the platforming and the fluid motion and everything control-wise in this game is absolutely smooth for the most part. But overall, I really love it. I love the animation of Banjo Kazooie. I love the different power ups they do with the jumping, the sliding, the little run that Kazooie does with Banjo on her back. It's absolutely fantastic, and it adds to the cartoony element. So the controls as well make this game a treat, and the story itself is just so cute and humorous. It's not even funny. I mean, it is funny, but it's not funny because it's not bad. It's, it's amazing. I love this game for the presentation and the platforming that it brings to the table. For the brief few levels that I played, one thing notoriously I came across when I was watching videos and reviews to kind of get an idea of what the game was like before I jumped into it myself were the water physics or the water controls. They're terrible. Uh, one thing you need to know well going into this game is I know there's at least two or three levels specific for underwater segments. And the brief one that I played to try and collect all these music notes in order to get like an extra life or something along those lines. I don't remember exactly what they were used for, but you have to collect all the 100 music notes in this game. When I was doing that briefly in the first level, um, it was abysmal, the water controls were. The physics don't work well. Banjo doesn't move fast enough, I found. He's very sluggish. It's like he filled his entire... He feel, It feels like he filled his pockets with rocks. He's very sluggish to control, very slow to move. The controls weren't very responsive for me whenever I was trying to go into like tight corners in order to get these music notes. They didn't really fit the control scheme of the game for me, because everything else is fluid and is pretty responsive. But the water controls, I don't understand why they're just not that good. And I understand from like the Banjo-Kazooie community and people who are just huge fans of the game in general, they absolutely love this game. Um, but the water controls, every time they say the physics don't work, is one of the worst aspects of the game. And while everything else I think is amazing, and this game is a masterpiece in itself, especially for a collectathon platformer, the I wish the water physics would physics would have been fixed because if it was in another kind of if it wasn't such a big deal like if it didn't require you to do as much stuff or collect as many items like jiggies or have main areas that you have to explore and complete it wouldn't be such as a big issue because you could just skip over some of these other collectibles but it's required to go into the water for a lot of these different parts so overall the game is amazing but the water controls as I prefaced are awful. And overall, guys, that is a brief uh, review of sorts from me. Like I said, it's not a full in-depth review because I haven't played that much of the game. But I did want to give a retrospective on Magic Kazooie from my own experiences. Overall, everything that I've talked about in this video, aside from the water physics, um, are, is amazing. I absolutely am loving this game. I look forward to playing it at some point very soon. Of course, I have several of the projects that I'm currently working on um, in terms of playing games and catching up on Let's Plays and whatnot. So... But I do plan to return to this game at some point, and who knows, maybe I'll make a full in-depth review. But either way, I just wanted to kind of give a brief retrospective, and thank you guys for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to do my best to try and keep up with videos as consistently as possible, because with my schedule, I need my own free time, as everyone does. Of course, I also have school starting up for me, and even though it's not as huge a deal schedule-wise, it's still something that something else that I need to do in addition to my job, so I also need to do that as well. But I will try and stay as consistent as possible when it comes to making these videos because I love making these. And I also want to say a huge shout out at the end of this video for the thumbnail maker. Once again, uh, Reject, my friend on YouTube who I've known for a long time, made a fantastic thumbnail. Um, he's made a few so far that I plan to utilize in the future going forward. Um, just to kind of briefly tease you guys, there is a DS game of mine that I loved when I was a kid that I'm planning on doing a review on at some point in the future that he did a pretty dang good job on as well kind of mimicked some of the tracks in the game to kind of give you guys a bit of a tease there but either way go check out reject in the description i will leave his channel link um you guys definitely need to go support him he put a ton of work into that thumbnail and from what i gathered the background of the thumbnail took him forever to draw so yeah <laughs> either way go follow him on anything that i put in the description for him guys he is an amazing guy and he definitely deserves a bunch of credit for his work thank you reject if you ever end up watching this by the way i do appreciate it man thank you
And once again, guys, if you're new to the channel and you're interested in what you see here from this video, this isn't my best work per se, because I did want to put this video out here as soon as I thought about doing it. And I know this video isn't as structured as well, because normally I write scripts and whatnot for it. I don't know why I'm bothering to explain this now, but for anyone new, this isn't the this isn't normally the style of video that I normally end up doing. I know you guys could probably tell that it wasn't on script all the time, but I kind of just wanted to convey my raw thoughts out there, if that makes sense. Anyway, for those of you who've been watching the channel, I don't have to explain this. Either way, thank you guys once again for watching and sticking with the channel. Look forward to more reviews and gaming videos in the future. And if you guys are new and you're interested, like I mentioned, go ahead and subscribe. And like the video and comment down below your thoughts on Banjo-Kazooie. Either way, guys, once again, thank you for supporting the channel. I do appreciate it, bros. Peace out and have a good day.